Hello, 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 guys. I'm back. Um, get this Emerald Tablets read. I know, right? Emerald Tablets, you see it? So I'm going to go ahead. This is some good information. It's long. It's this first. Um, it might be three of them. I know it's two. But uh, scrolls all together. The first one is like 40, there's 40 axioms. So this is probably going to take maybe two or more videos to get through. I'm going to try to keep them down to 20 minutes because I don't want, it's like only five minutes of the videos are really being watched. So I, this might be exciting and some people might want to see the whole thing. But here we go, chapter 63. This is from the um, Holy Megillah, the Nazarene Bible of the Essene Way. This is in the New Testament part. Okay. The first of the scrolls read aloud to the congregation by Nabiah, Sophia, and Shavala. Axioms of the Golden Dragon, first recorded by Hermon the Wizard upon the Emerald Tablets, being the words of Abraham, the Abram. High priest of the seventh heaven of this solar system, recorded on dragon fired clay, adorned with the green emerald within a golden heart at the time of his appearance to Hermon in the form of a golden dragon. Here is the first of the Nazarene emerald tablet scrolls that were read aloud over the. Um, that were read aloud over the course of one day by Nabiah, the prophetess, and her student Sophia, and Shavala, with pauses for reflection at appropriate spots. Nabiah was the reader of this first scroll that now follows. To Hermon, the thrice blessed messenger of Gil Gala, the wizardress to Egypt, and to all that become his students in green wizardry and white magic. From Abraham, the Abram as golden dragon, subject axioms on principles related to Nazarene green wizardry and white magic. Behold the words of the golden dragon gifted to Hermon and Thoth and their wizardly students to come. These words were spoken by the golden dragon to Hermon and Thoth upon their arrival to the forest in the region of Lake Maritosis, Egypt. Golden Dragon said, Hermon, I honor your ascension in our mystery schools by adding to your name. I name you Hermon of the Triune Majesty, for you are consecrated, you are a consecrated servant of the Holy Creative Trinity, the Trinity of Yah, Jah, and Jala, that emanated Jade and Jana, and created the Mother Ova as revealed by your thoughts, words, and deeds in many lifetimes. Behold, this is the forest in which you will establish a branch of green wizards of white magic in fulfillment of the assignment given to you by wizardress Gilgala. This forest is far from big cities, but near enough to the lake to participate in its blessings. The, there are springs here, and within the forest are sunny meadows to farm. You can trade with those that live near to the lake and with those that live near to the coast. Lo, we stand beside a spring of living water. This is a place of great natural power, and a name for that natural power is Chi, which means life force. Let us be in silence now and feel that natural power. After a period of meditative silence, the golden dragon exhaled fire upon a large block of green clay, making the clay into a green tablet. And the large tablet was adorned by a green emerald with a, within a heart of gold according to the will of the golden dragon. And the golden dragon spoke again, saying, Hermon of the triune majesty, this tablet is green to symbolize the living trees and plants of this forest, and also because green is the color that symbolizes the heart wheel, heart chakra. If it is harmonious with your will, please write on the green tablet the axioms that I will speak. 
this tablet is large and so will stand by the altar in the temple in the forest of the green wizards of the white rose. That temple will be built there and will appear from outside to be but a farmhouse in a forested portion of this large farm. A meeting room and huts can be hidden from public view so as to escape violent persecution. Again, the golden dragon spoke saying, Herman of the triune majesty, you will also be known as Herman, the Phoenix Rider, for you have been carried to Egypt by my dear friend and co-worker, Phoenix Thoth of Madheba. I ask you, Herman, is it harmonious with your will to serve as my scribe for this green tablet of the emerald and golden heart? Herman replied, it is harmonious with my will to serve as your scribe. As the golden dragon spoke, the following axioms of the golden dragon, Herman acted as scribe. After the golden dragon recited the following axioms, Herman wrote them on the clay tablet for display in the forest temple of Nazarene green wizards of the white rose. Because the first Nazarene emerald tablet was not very mobile and could not be easily circulated, Herman then wrote the words onto a scroll and added his own commentary on the axiom. It is that version that now follows as the commentary is deemed helpful. Axiom one of the golden dragon. Love is old. Love in all ways, always in love is the formula that turns any stone into gold. This is the white magic wizard, stone of power, the highest white magic for heavenly transformation and spiritual ascension into spiritual gold. Herman's commentary on Axiom 1. This can also be called the philosopher's stone, for true lovers of wisdom understand that our spiritual foundation is that of the highest wisdom, not any relatively lower wisdom, for the highest wisdom trumps all other more limited wisdom, being by nature the highest wisdom. If you build your holy temple within on any other foundation stone than highest wisdom, it will eventually fall. Axiom 2 of the Golden Dragon. The highest wisdom is the nod of wisdom to love. This enables justice to lean, nod, a bit towards mercy in every closed call. The motion of that nod being a movement of willing surrender of ultimate authority to love by wisdom. That motion is the supreme motion of eternal life and supernal compassion by which wisdom and love birth the universal Christ child. Mercy, the highest power. That supreme motion is the only motion that has eternal life, for all other motions are limited, some more than others. Highest wisdom was realized and made manifest in this nod. With this nod, wisdom acknowledged that the great mysteries of life, even the mysteries of eternal life, are only truly solved by universal salvation and universal love. Herman's commentary on Axiom 2. Universal salvation must be defined by unlimited, must be, de universal salvation must, must by definition be unlimited. Eventual universal salvation is the great hope of the ascending spiral of being because the all is still unfolding and due to ill choices by many beings, many beings suffer in hell pits of their own creation. Thus the eyes of limited wisdom see no evidence for the universal salvation of all beings and mock the idea. Even so, due to the fact that the knot of wisdom to love is the highest wisdom that is, ex that is exterior that is exterior to every limited wisdom 
the ultimate victory of universal love is not only assured, but is acknowledged by the wise as always present and most present. To make that acknowledgement is to acknowledge the ultimate victory of supernal love as the universal archetype of victory. The most unlimited form of victory and thus the highest victory, the only form of victory that delivers ultimate universal salvation to all beings. All of the limited wisdom can be transformed by the highest wisdom. That is the nod of wisdom to universal love. The compassionate mercy of unlimited love is the Christ child that is born in the manger of every willing soul. The nod being the seed that impregnates love so as to birth sparks of love wisdom, resulting in the eternal expansion of wisdom and love. But love is not without wisdom. Rather, love is impregnated by wisdom. Perpetual expansion of love is the most unlimited love, and the highest truth could not be otherwise. Upon contemplation, wisdom knew all of this prior to that. This highest wisdom existed latently within the bosom of undifferentiated beings as the highest latent realization. The highest latent realization was actualized by the nod of wisdom to love. <clears throat> that actualization is the supernal actualization. That actualization is the highest manifestation, the only manifestation that has eternal life, the the only ultimate reality, all others being relatively limited, both quantitatively and qualitatively. The relationship between love and wisdom is sexual in nature and results in creative power in endless cycles of creative, creative orgasmic explosions that give birth to stars. Those stars then express themselves by pulsating in black space impregnating virgin fields with the vibration of eternal life, cosmic sperm, fertilizing the egg of unactualized potential and creative expansion. The dance of wisdom and love is expressed in the cyclic spiral dance of the sphere and the cube, which is the dance of spirit in nature that includes all of the unfolding sacred geometries. That dance is dance spirally together by him and her, wisdom and love, Shamesh and Shamaya, both crowned with Yah, spirit, both expressing that dance in nature to Mother Ova. Axiom three of the golden dragon. The most potent magical will is that will in harmony with the divine will. The divine will is expressed in the divine plan, which can be summed up as let there be existence, consciousness, and bliss in the motion of ascending love, which is the motion of the nod of wisdom to love, now and forever. Amen. Herman's Commentary on Axiom 3. Where it is, where, where, <laughs> were it not for bliss, consciousness, the quality of existence would be limited, and that is not going to happen in a universe that is of the highest quality. I'm going to read this one more, and then stop it and do another video. Actually, I think I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to put Axiom 4 of the Golden Dragon onto the next video because oh, I could have did this one on here. Sorry. Diversity within unity is apparent up, up, up on deep contemplation. Unity and diversity is equally apparent. So Herman's commentary on Axiom 4. Within the oneness of the all universal YHWH is much diversity of expression of by beings, yet all are crowned in the 
unity of Yah as Ia, which is I am, together being the monads that in unity are the universal monad, which is universal YHWH, the all, ultimate, and unlimited unity. The universal monad, the universal one, is the monad that is inclusive of all monads. The only one that includes everyone, thus is called the one and only thing that is inclusive of everything, or simply put, unity, oneness, all. Nazarenes also call the all by the term universal Yahweh. Universal YHWH. All right, we got through four of them. Let me do. Let me do a total of five on this one. I'll do five apiece. Axiom five of the Golden Dragon. As above, so below. Each being is a monad. Each monad is a part of a larger body made up of other monads. Each monad participating in one universal monad that includes all, each monad also simultaneously experiencing being an individual soul itself within the universe's self since each part of the inclusive all has the same sense of individuality as does the first one. After all, we are all extensions from that one, wherefore I say, as above, so below. Herman's commentary on Axiom 5, each point is an individual monad created in the image and likeness of the original monad that expresses itself by unfolding to reveal itself as a triune oneness, birthing every sacred geometry as above, so below. The most inclusive sacred geometry is the sphere or circle that includes within itself everything else, including every point of every unfolding geometry. Wherefore, the circle represents the universal all that includes every point in the one thing that is universal, YHWH. Each monad is an undivided spark of the one flame. Each monad is also a drop of the infinite ocean of unlimited love. Thus, each monad is a circle within the ultimate, within the unlimited circle, expressing itself as the alternating pulsating of the dance of the sphere and the cube. The point that emerges from the center of the circle and vibrates to the circumference there to reverse the dominant polarity and return to the center perpetually in cyclic spirals, producing the life force we call Chi, which is the power of the stars crowned by Yah. The universal heartbeat is the power of a star that burns in space and is the power that empowers you, always in the image and likeness of the holy cre creative trinity, the triune oneness, this alternating cycle expressed as cold space giving birth to hot stars that in turn will become cold space in order to again birth hot stars can be called the spiral dance of him and her. That is us. It is an alternating spiral stream, a current of vibration, a double helix spiral dance of Shemesh in Shemaya that expresses itself in the life force vibration of Chi. This is the life force that spirals upward into spiritual gold, highly evolved life. It is returned to Godhead, then returns to help out in the, in the case, then returns to help out in the cause of universal love. Some seeds have fruited and have been harvested into heavenly realms, into the heavenly realm of highly evolved life. Uh -oh. See, this is the one that's really long. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, I'm going to stop here because he breaks down all of these numbers. 7, 8, 9, 10. That would take me like another 20 minutes to read that. So you guys are going to have to go to the next video. We stopped here halfway through Herman's commentary on Axiom 5. So I'm just going to pick up the next video reading it starting with Axiom 5. I thought I could get all five on there. But uh, they're long. All right, guys. Stay tuned. Keep watching. Part the next part is coming up.